está maior um pouco. My mama, I don't know my way to come back. Your boat, you can, like a boat, come near to me and pick me up in that. Then it's possible to come out from the Please take me to the wonderful abode of your lotus feet in the powerful boat of your mercy. Even I don't know how to come out and I don't know this ocean, how I can come out. You have to pull me up and put it on me, put my body on the boat of your mind. You can do my I am floating in that. My failure. When the mind is very agitated by feelings of separation, the loving devotee may feel helpless or unfortunate, unable to make an end to it. Although he feels smashed by the pain of separation, he knows there is no other remedy than the direct attainment of Sri Radhika's audience and service. Srila Raghunata Dasa Goswami feels as if he is lying in the middle of an ocean of misery, which knows no comparison in this mundane world. The moment I forget you, I am in misery of mundane world. And I'm going in and in in this situation. <laughs> No amount of material or spiritual suffering can compare to it. One day, Sri Gauri Devi Parvati asked her divine husband, Sriman Mahadev, Lord Shiva, about the super excellence of Sri Radha's love, and Lord Shiva told her. Wow. Oh Shiva, Parvati, mm -hmm. if you would make separate piles of all the happiness and misery of all the free worlds, as well as of all the spiritual worlds, 
it could not be compared with even a drop of the happiness during meeting and the misery during separation that Sri Radhika feels out of her love for Krishna. Yeah. This is also very beautiful. Parvati is the Shiva wife and she is Mahamaya. No? She is the original what Maya is come catching us. She is the controller of Maya because she is Mahamaya. So, read again this. Oh Shiva, Parvati, if you would make separate piles of all the happiness and misery of all the three worlds, wow. as well as of all the spiritual worlds, it could not be compared with even a drop of the happiness and misery that Sri Radhika feels out of her love for Krishna. Yeah. yeah. The Kinkaris also experience some of this happiness and distress because they are non different from Sri Radhika at heart. And they have some of her Mahababa infused in them. And thus, if a loving devotee hears even a faint reflection of the high dancing waves that roll on the terrible ocean of Sri Raghunath's suffering from separation from a distance, he will immediately understand. No devotee aspirant in the world can speak like that. Only a pure devotee can. Then the picture of the sad, moon-like face of Sriman Mahaprabhu, the personification of the Vipralamba Rasa, mood of love in separation, as he relished Sri Radha's feelings of separation from Sri Krishna in the Gambira, will be drawn on the slate of his mind. Gurudev, I have prepared some commentaries. Should I keep on reading or can I can okay. I say? Yeah. Okay. So this last set sentence described one of the main internal reasons for uh, the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. His Krishna's desire to relish the love in separation which Radhika feels. So in the Gambira house, in Jagannath Puri, at the end of his earthly pastimes, Lord Chaitanya spent many days immersed in this bhava, in the company of his most intimate associates. During the later stages of his pastimes in Gambira, 
Lord Chaitanya was so greatly absorbed in the feeling of separation from Krishna that he exhibited the highest symptoms of devotional ecstasy. His condition was similar to gopis of Vrindavan who were devastated after Krishna left for Mathura. The lamentation by Srimati Radharani that was witnessed by Udava when he visited Vrindavan after Krishna had left became a feature of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's transcendental madness. When the gopis felt separation from Krishna, they underwent ten kinds of bodily transformations. The same manifestations appeared in the body of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Right. Whenever Mahaprabhu manifested such ecstatic emotions, Ramananda Roy and Swarup Damodar recited various verses from the scriptures, from the works of Chandidas, Bivamangala Thakur, Jayadev Goswami, to pacify the impassioned heart of Lord Chaitanya. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ecstatic transformations sometimes caused his breathing to stop and his body to become elongated. Uh, this next verse is from Antia Lila, 1465 Each of Lord Chaitanya's arms and legs had become three cubits long, while only skin connected the isolated joints. The Lord's body temperature indicating life was very low. All the joints in his arms, legs, neck and waist were parted by at least six inches. It was only after the devotees loudly chanted the holy names of Krishna in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's ear that the Lord was revived. As soon as he returned to his external consciousness, all of his joints contracted and his entire body became normal. Wow. Srila Raghunatha Dasa Goswami, who had witnessed these pastimes firsthand, had elaborately described them in his Gorangastava Kalpavriksha. So I have chosen three verses from this beautiful, beautiful poem by Srila Raghunatha Dasa Goswami. Uh, verse number four. Sometimes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go to the house of Keshi Misha. There he would be greatly aggrieved, feeling separation from Krishna. The joints of his transcendental body would slacken and his arms and legs would become elongated. Rolling on the ground, the Lord would cry out in his distress in a faltering voice and weep very sorrowfully. The appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu awakening in my heart maddens me. Verse number five. How wonderful it is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left his residence without opening the three strongly bolted doors. Then he crossed over three high walls. And later, because of strong feelings of separation from Krishna, 
he fell down amidst the cows of the Tailanga district and retracted all the limbs of his body like a tortoise. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who appeared in that way, rises in my heart and maddens me. And the last one, verse number six. Because of separation from his many friends in Vrindavan, who were like his own life, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu spoke like a madman. His intelligence was transformed. Day and night, he rubbed his moon-like face against the walls and blood flowed from the injuries. May that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu rise in my heart and make me mad with love. Yeah. So I will continue with the commentary from Shilanata Das Babaji. When the life airs reach the throat because of strong feelings of love in separation, then again a vision of the deity may come to the devotee, which helps him to stay alive again. Then there is no end to his bliss, and he thinks he is close to his beloved again. This constant succession of meeting and separation brings the devotee in an indescribable condition. This is the specialty of the love of Raj. And it is known as the great treasure of the Raja Rasa Upasaka, practitioner of the flavors of Raj. Whether this prima is to be known as the greatest bliss during union or the greatest sorrow during separation cannot be ascertained. But when it arises, it makes the devotee always act as if he is completely mad. Yeah. When the vision of the beloved vanishes, the pain of separation becomes so severe that it wipes the remembrance of the just experienced bliss of union out of the mind. In such a condition, only another such vision can keep the devotee alive. The practicing aspirant should also have some experience in his bhajan. The more experience one has, the more advanced one is. It is shown in Srimad Bhagavata that just by one time consciously offering his obeisances, Akrura Mahashai had his spiritual aspirations fulfilled. How much relish is there in one of the obeisances? Sri Shukadev told Maharaj Parikshit, O King, 
from his chariot. Akrura saw the footprints of Krishna marked with the special signs of the lotus flower, barley corn, elephant goat, and others on the soil of the meadows of Raja. The dust of these feet is held by all the maintainers of the universe, the demigods, on their crowns. Akrura's ecstatic love and respect increased when he saw these signs. His hairs stood on end and his eyes became filled with tears of ecstatic love. He jumped from his chariot onto the ground and exclaimed, Oh, how amazing, how amazing. Rolling in that food dust and offering his obeisances. Shortly afterwards, he had the darshana of Krishna and Baladeva. In this way, we want experience in all the items of devotion. When we see these experiences of a devotee, it seems as if the Lord is taking him along by the hand. Can the devotee continue if he does not even get slightly acquainted with his beloved deity? How can we advance towards someone we have never seen who is beyond our purview? I could not get acquainted with she who is everything to me. I never even think of the maid service of Sri Radha, to whom my merciful spiritual master has introduced me. My bodily consciousness is so strong. Everything is adverse to the mood I desire. What a waste our life is when we don't get even slightly acquainted with she who makes even the Supreme Lord of all material and spiritual worlds faint by casting a single sidelong glance at him. The aspirant is drawn towards Radharani's lotus feet by his own strong desire to reach them. Swamini, if you just once stay in my thoughts or in my dreams, then I will be consoled. Please respond, O Swamini. Just tell me once your mind. I am sitting here, just waiting for that and nothing else. When the devotee is so anxiously and exclusively waiting, everything else becomes 
insignificant for him. And he will slowly be drawn to Radharani's lotus feet through his experience. Yeah. The light that emanates from Sri Radha's toenails will illuminate the heart of any devotee who develops such an indescribable devotion. Krishna will come to anyone who meditates on Sri Radhika's lotus feet. Yeah, oh, yeah. And who hears and chants about her yeah. without even being called. Wherever I hear the words Shri Rade, Shri Rade from anyone's mouth, in that direction my mind runs. Yeah. Even the king of lovers. Lalji Krishna will be astonished by it. Even he will have to come down. Yeah. That is from Srimad Bhagavatam 1217. It says that Krishna sits in the hearts of those who hear and sing about him and cleanses all material contamination from these hearts, making them worthy places for him to sit. Swamini's heart is even softer. According to the Mahajanas, she says, anyone who speaks about me is as I want him or her to be. In other words, is pleasing me very much. This I said, sitting in Vrindavan. Actually, without Srimati Radharani's mercy, Krishna can never be attained. Sri Radha. Srila Narottam Das Thakur sings, Anyone who decorates one's body with Radhika's food dust easily gets Giridari. Yes. I praise any great soul who takes shelter of Radhika's lotus feet. Glory, glory to the holy name of Radha that resides in Vrindavan. And that is the jewel of Krishna's pastimes. Fate has deprived me by not letting me hear the glorification of Radha. Yeah. Anyone who associates with Radha's devotees and speaks about her rasa, her pastimes and her love will attain Giridari, uh, Ganashyam, sorry, Ganashyam, Krishna. But anyone who is against this will never attain perfection. Yeah. Let us not even hear these people's names. Oh, brother. When you sing Krishna's name, you will get Radhika's lotus feet. And when you sing Radha's name, you will get Krishna Chandra. I told you this shortly. So now extinguish the pain in your mind. All other topics are simply miserable. Yeah. Why is Sri Raghunatha Dasa calling a cowherd girl goddess in this verse? 
Chaitanya Charita Amrita, Adilila 4.84 says, Devi means most effulgent or most beautiful. But this beauty is made of the pinnacle of divine love. Otherwise, it cannot make Rasika Shekhara happy. This was experienced in a transcendental vision. Devi also means worshipable. By whom is she worshipable? She is the abode of Krishna's pastimes of worship. The verbal root div has several meanings. One of them is krida or playful. Shri Krishna plays in Shri Radha. Therefore, she is called Devi. Of course, Krishna also plays in other beloveds. But since Shri Radha is the root cause of all these consorts, it is said, Vasati Nagari, she is the abode. She is not just Krishna's beloved. She is also the object of his worship. Now the picture of a sweet Leela appears in Shiragunata's mind. Shri Shri Radha Madhava are enjoying in a kunja. And Tulasi, who is non different from Swamini, in heart and body, is engaged in fanning them. During their amorous pastimes, in which Krishna plays the passive role as a qualified hero, Krishna Things of ecstasy, overwhelmed by her Madana Mahabhava. But Anuragavati, passionate Radhika, is not satisfied. She herself had enchanted her qualified hero. And now he doesn't know what to do anymore. During Cupid's festival, Swamini strikes her hero with her play lotus. Tulasi giggles when she sees this. And that laughter maddens Shamasunda. This is one of the Kinkari's matchless services. Yeah. That's a bhav laughter. That's the meaning of the Thai bhav. Fixed. Kinkari means Radha's Dasi is fixed on me to see the pastime of Radha and his lover Krishna. And she becomes so much in ecstasy. That's a bow So this bow is a sigh. Six nature of Dasi, Radha Dasi. Well. This is one of the Kinkari's matchless services. 
which can only be experienced by the Rasika devotees. Swamini sits up on the bed, her dress disheveled, but still effulgent. It is as if sweetness drips from each of her limbs. Our hero is maddened by that sweetness. When I see the sweetness of her body, after we've made love, I am beside myself of ecstasy. Swamini then tells Krishna, O oh, beautiful one, redress me before my sakis come here and make fun of me. Our hero then eagerly sits down at Swamini's feet, ready to decorate her. Praneshwari says, smear footlap around my feet. Lalji Krishna starts the job, holding her feet to his chest and getting immersed in their sweetness while looking at them. Impatiently, Swamini says, what are you doing? Quickly, put that lack on. What will my girlfriend say if they see me like this? But our hero sometimes holds her feet to his chest, sometimes kisses them, and sometimes also paints some lack on them with trembling hands, as if he finally found a jewel, but didn't know where to keep it. Some of the wet red leg gets stuck on Shyama's bluish chest, making it look like the rising sun in the dense darkness, or like a red lotus flower growing in the blackish water of the Yamuna. This blazing red light, yeah. this blazing red light of loving Radhika's feet defeats the beauty of the Shivatsa sign, the Kaustuba gem, and the golden line that represents the goddess of fortune on Krishna's chest. Shyama is enchanted by the beauty of Shriji's feet. Krishna enchants the world, but Radhika enchants even him. Yeah. So she says, Oh, beautiful one, I understand. You cannot do it. Tulasi, come. You put this foot leg on. Yeah. Making Shyama think to himself, alas, how unqualified I am. Getting Swam in his order, Tulasi softly pushes Shyam and says, move up. Through you, it can be done. I will do it. 
Just as Tulasi stretches out her hand to catch Swamini's feet, the transcendental revelation disappears and she begins to lament, thinking. Now I'm helplessly falling in an ocean of misery. Your lotus feet are my abode. Please take me there with the wonderful boat of your mercy across this ocean of suffering. Shirasika Chandra Dasa sings. Listen, listen, O Goddess Shrimati Radike. I have fallen in the middle of the great ocean of misery caused by being separated from you. And my heart is always burning. I am helpless for I do not know how to swim. Your mercy is my only hope. Now take me to the abode of your lotus feet with the powerful boat of your mercy. Rade, Rade, Gurudev. So I, I did prepare some commentaries or some things in the words, but maybe you can, you can, no, you can. No, very nicely explained. Okay. okay, thank you. So let us, let us then start with this last Lila. <laughs> Please, I would like all of you to help me, especially Goranga Sundara. I do not qualify to be saying something, but again, for my purification, this is very good. So in this last Leela, um, we see that Radhika asked Krishna to decorate her feet. But because of his special ecstasy, Krishna is unable to do this service. He is incompetent. He is beside himself and he doesn't know. He cannot put the foot like on Radhika's feet. Seeing this, Radhika instructs Tulasi to do this service. So, this is a very special service for Sri Raghunath. In his uh, Svarupa Vesha, in his Nitya Kunja, uh, Raghunath's uh, primary service as a kinkari is massaging Radhika's feet. So, by doing this service, Raghunath is also very, very happy. He is very happy to do any kind of service that include Radhika's feet. Uh, we can see that because Krishna is sometimes unable to perform certain services, kinkaris have to do it. So, being a kinkari is a very special position. Uh, kinkaris uh, have to perform very intimate services. They have to make sure that these lilas, Radha Mohan's lilas, perform nicely and smoothly. And they are able to do this because their heart is one with Radha with Radha's heart. 
so they feel what Radhika feels. And it is also said that they are so expert in their service that sometimes even Radhika is astonished by how they perform the service. They know which service to perform and when. Sometimes, even before Radha knows, before Radha realizes herself. Uh, so I would like to say a couple of more things regarding Radhika's feet, since this Lila was about them. Uh, we often refer to Radhika's lotus feet as our only abode. This is a personification of us taking shelter of Swamini. Uh, we have to take shelter, we have to take, abode, we have to, uh, take the abode of Radhika's lotus feet so that we are dependent on her. The more we take shelter of her lotus feet, the more we can advance in our spiritual life. So we have, we have to come to an understanding that Swamini is our sole maintainer and well-wisher. Another point is that as being Radhika's Dasi, Radhika's maid servant. It is customary in our tradition to pay obeisances to our beloved Ishtadev, to Swamini. So when we do this, when we pay obeisances, we have to naturally get down on the floor. And while we are getting up, the first part of Swamini's body, we will see, are her feet. So, by paying obeisances, uh, it, is, it indicates a humble state of mind. And by looking at Radhika's feet, we are always reminded that we are her dasi. One more thing, it is said that when Radhika walks, flowers sprout and bloom beneath her feet. So her feet are all favorable. And one more thing I have heard is that when we are battling with an artist, especially with our life desires, we should meditate on putting Radhika's feet on our head. And in this way, we can purify our heart and senses. Should I continue or? No, really. <laughs> <laughs> so let me go back to the beginning of the commentary. Uh, Ananta Das Baba was explaining um, the separation Raghunath feels from Swamini. So he says in the commentary that no amount of material or spiritual suffering can compare to it. So we can see how intense is this feeling of separation that Raghunath feels. We cannot even begin to imagine the level of suffering Raghunatha is experiencing. But out of his great feelings of compassion, even though these feelings are indescribable, Sri Padananta Das Babaji, as a realized soul, will try to describe them so that we can get a glimpse of Raghunath's inner emotions. 
we have talked about this on our last Zoom Sangha when Goranga Sundara was so nicely explaining this, this point also. Some realizations we have to, some feelings and realizations we have to realize ourselves. And uh, until we do that, by the help of Mahajanas, we can get some little glimpse by these kind of uh, descriptions. So Baba is very merciful. The next point I would like to discuss a little bit is, it is said in the commentary that uh, the Kinkaris also experience some of his, some of this happiness and distress. Because they are not different from Shiradika at heart. And they have some of her Mahabhava infused in them. So there are different stages of Prema. Uh, in Ujwala Nilamani, Rupa Goswami writes that in Madura Rati, Prema unfolds into Sneha, Mana, Pranaya, Raga, Anuraga, Bhava, and Mahabhava. So Mahabhava is the topmost sage of love for God. Mahabhava is only, uh, uh, can only be found in Shimati Radharani. That's why she is called Mahabhava Mai. In Chaitanya Charitamrita Adilila 4.69, it is said, Shirada Takurani is the embodiment of Mahabhava. She is the repository of all good qualities and the crest jewel among all the lovely consorts of Lord Krishna. Commentary. The, una, the unadulterated action of the Hladini Shakti is displayed in the dealings of the damsels of Rajan. And Srimati Radharani, who is the topmost participant in that transcendental group. The essence of the Hladini Shakti is love of Godhead. The essence of love of Godhead is bhava, or transcendental sentiment. And the highest pitch of that bhava is called Mahabhava. Srimati Radhika is the personified embodiment of these three aspects of transcendental consciousness. She is therefore the highest principle in love of Godhead and is the supreme lovable object of Sri Krishna. So this stage of bhava cannot be attained by anyone else. It is inherited to Srimati Radhika. Only Radhika's kinkaris, manjaris, can feel some degree of this Mahabhava because their heart is not different from Radhika's heart. They feel what Radhika feels, only to a lesser degree. Okay. Um, one thing I would like to say more is regarding <coughs> Baba's commentary, where he's saying that the practicing devotee should have some experience in his bhajan. I think this is very important. 
so that we uh, we have seen that here Baba explains very nicely about the joy the devotee feels when he gets darshan of his beloved Ishtadev. And the pain he feels during separation. In Raghunath's case, these feelings are very, very intense. That is why it is often described in Vilapa Kusumanjali that after Raghunath comes back to his Sadaka Deha, he rolls on the ground and weeps in pain. In these moments, the only thing that can consort him is this hope that he will see his beloved Swamini again. But even though we, as practicing devotees, may not be on the highest stage of prema like Raghunath, Baba also says that the practicing devotee should have some experience in bhajan. So he's talking about practical experience. He's not talking about theory. As Gurudev often says, we need our bhajan to be alive. We need the practical experience to keep our spiritual life juicy. We do not want to become, we do not, we do not want it to become dry and stale, like a mechanical thing. So for this, we need practice, strong desire, and Guru Kripa. Then results will surely come. Then, I have uh, chosen again one part of the commentary. It was said that uh, what a waste our life is when we don't even get slightly acquainted with she who makes even the Supreme Lord of all material and spiritual worlds faint by casting a single sidelock glance at him. So this is again very important. Baba is saying that we have to get acquainted with our beloved Ishtadev. Otherwise, how can we expect to meet Swamini? What to speak about serving her as an intimate maidservant? So that is why books like Vilapa Kusumanjali are so important. They contain so many information about Shimati Radhika's Rupa, Guna, Nama, and Lila. The more we read about Radhika's form, Radhika's attributes, name, and pastimes, the more we can meditate and visualize. Just like Goranga Sundara explained very nicely on our previous Sangha, this practice will help us to develop our bhajan and ultimately bring us to the level of real experience. Please, if anybody has something to add, please don't be afraid. <laughs> <clears throat> then it was said in the commentary regarding um, uh, regarding our element, regarding Raghunath's lamentation for Swamini, <clears throat> Just tell me once, stay in my thoughts or in my dreams. I'm sitting here just waiting for that and nothing else. Actually, this is our this should be our lamentation for Swamini. So in Croatian language, we have one saying. <clears throat> which basically means uh, what is in our mind, what we meditate on. It happens in our reality. So Baba has explained very nicely that the practicing devotee aspires for darshan of his beloved Swamini. When we can focus our mind 
during the day on our seva, on Swamini, or as Gurudev often says, when we can live in that consciousness, Swamini will come to us in our sleep. It is scientifically proven that our daily impressions affect our dreams. For a devotee who has developed strong attachment for Swamini, it is very easy to meditate on her. It is natural. It comes with strong emotions, feelings for Swamini. So Guru De once very nicely explained how we should humbly meditate on getting darshan. He was saying that we should come to Vrindavan, sit and chant, and pray to Swamini, pray to Swamini like this. Oh Swamini, here is your little dasi. I know that I'm not qualified, but please fulfill my heart's desire and give me your darshan. Make me yours. We cannot order Swamini to appear before us, but we can humbly ask her with great eagerness in our afflicted heart. So then the next thing in the commentary, which caught my attention is, it is said that Krishna will come to anyone who meditates on Sri Radha, Sri Radha's lotus feet, and who hears and chants about her without even being called. So if a devotee aspires to serve Krishna as Nanda Nandana, he should meditate and ask for blessings for Srimati Radharani. Why? Because Radhika is Vrindavaneshwari, the mistress of Vrindavan. She is the crown jewel of all the gopis. She can serve Krishna like no other gopi can. Without Srimati Radharani's blessings, we cannot enter into Vraj. If we meditate only on Krishna, without Srimati Radhika, maybe we will reach Dvaraka Krishna, or Matura Krishna, or Vishnu depending on our mood. But if our goal is Vrajadama, we have to go through Shimati Radhika. There is no other way. So then it was also said that Shimati Radhika is not just Krishna's beloved, that she is the object of his worship. But this is very beautiful. The whole world worships Krishna. And in Vrindavana, Krishna works Srimati Radhika. So we are very fortunate that we worship Radhika, who is Krishna's object of worship. Yeah. I would like to read one verse from Srila Prabhandananda Saraswati's Vrindavan Mahanamrita. It's verse 34. Satakatu. He who strives for liberation is fortunate in this world. He who is intent on devotional service to Lord Hari is more fortunate. He who has spontaneous attraction for Lord Krishna's lotus feet is more fortunate. He who is devoted to Lord Krishna as, her, as the husband of Rukmini, is even more fortunate. He who is devoted to Lord Krishna as the son of Yashoda Devi is still more fortunate. He who is devoted to Lord Krishna as the friend of Subal is even more fortunate. He who is devoted to Lord Krishna as the lover of the gopis is still more fortunate. And then a devotee overwhelmed by the nectar of love for Srimati Radharani, the beautiful queen of Rindavan, is the most fortunate of all. Yeah. By Guru's grace, we got this chance to become Radha Dasi. 
So we should feel very fortunate and blessed and take full advantage of this opportunity. No, very good. Very nice. So this, I guess, concludes what I have prepared. Um, I have also written something about Madana Mahabhava, but I think there are more qualified speakers here who could say something about this. It's a bit technical, so... If Guru Dev wants, I will read it, but maybe somebody else can say something about Madana Mahabhava or any other subject we have talked about. You connect, share with that. Then this way when you share, then more and more feeling It's beautiful. Mm, okay. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, so um, it was said that Krishna fainted. Uh, Krishna fainted over during during these pastimes, <clears throat> uh, which were described when um, Tulasi was fanning Radha and Krishna. It was said that Krishna fainted out of ecstasy, overwhelmed by Radhika's Madana Mahabhava. So I have looked up some of the stages uh, of Prema and Mahabhava. I will try to make it short because it's it's pretty technical. It was something also very new for me. So, <clears throat> so I said before that in Ujjwala Nilamani, Rupa Goswami writes that in Madura Rati, uh, Prema unfolds into Sneha, Mana, Pranaya, Raga, Anuraga, Bhava, and Mahabhava. So basically, there are two kinds of Mahabhava. The first one is Ruda, and the second one is Adiruda. So Ruda Mahabhava exists when Mahabhava glows and is brightened with the external manifestations of the eight sattvika bhavas, of the internal sentiments. So these sattvika bhavas are tears, corripulation or frill, stop or, or motionless, perspiration, coarseness of voice, or indistinct, indistinct, indistinctiveness of utterances, tremor or heaving of breasts, change of complexion or paleness, and swoon or loss of consciousness, or syncope or fainting fit. So, when five or six of these 88 sattvika bhavas are simultaneously and fully manifest, and the rest partially, it is called Ruda Mahabhava. So some are fully manifest, some of these sattvika bhavas are fully manifest, and some are, some are manifested partially. This is called Ruda Mahabhava. Adi Ruda Mahabhava, uh, is called when in Mahabhava all the eight sattvika bhavas mentioned above bef before are completely and to the utmost extent manifest and culminate in a unique experience. So this is called Adi Ruda Mahabhava. Uh, Adi Ruda Mahabhava has two forms. Modana and Madana. So Modana is uh, 
Modana Mahabhava is felt by Shimati Radharani, exhibited in Shimati Radharani in separation. It is said that when the conditions of Modana become uncontrolled and paralyzed in separation, and when the, all the eight sattvika bhavas are fully and at all, all at once manifest in all their fascinating bewilderment, it is called Mohana. So Modana and Mohana. And then we have Madana Mahabhava, which was mentioned in the commentary. So it is said that when all the sentiments, starting from Rati, which is the essence of Hladini potency of Shri Krishna, and going up to Mahabhava, are pleasantly and fully bloomed. And when such a state excels all the aspects of Modana and Mohana in Adiruda Mahabhava, then it is known as, as, as Madana Mahabhava. So this is possible only in Shiradika. So one was, I would just like to say one more thing is that uh, this Mahabhava was, as we said before, one of the reasons Sri Chaitanya appeared. <clears throat> Sri Krishna wanted himself to relish Radhika's Mahabhava. So we are very fortunate to live in this time when Sri Chaitanya appeared in this mood mood of Rasika's love in Radhika's love in separation. Beautiful. Very nice. Thank you very much for listening to me. Forgive me for my mistakes. If I said no. something wrong, it's my it's my uh, ignorance. It's if I said something correct, it's Gurudev's Kripa. Very, very nicely you explain all these things. I'm proud of So maybe somebody would like to say something or maybe share something or somebody has some comment or I can also continue reading. Yeah, this is also one possibility. Hmm. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you very much, Deva Prana, for this nice and elaborate speech which you gave to us. It's great mercy to listen how much devotees are relishing this deep subject, actually. And it gives joy to the heart, actually, that this kind of devotees are existing in our nice association. So I don't have anything to add because you already said everything. And this commentary and words is actually commentary which possess everything what we need for practicing of our Manjari Bhava to attain Radhika. Everything is mentioned. And this commentary is completely enough. If we don't read anything else, 
this commentary is completely enough to give us sufficient information, knowledge, but also to stimulate our emotions. And in that way to to prepare us, to prepare our heart to receive Kripa in a proper way. Everything is here. We don't need to read, like Gurudev is saying, we don't need to read any other books except Vilapa Kusumanjali. And in this commentary, we don't need to read any other commentaries. Everything is summarized. And devotees with their relishing, they can just relish more and more every sentence, every word. You tried to give us our uh, the hint how to do this, to go deeper and elaborate it. And I'm very, 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 really happy. And my heart is... I hope that Gurudev is also very pleased to have uh, such a nice disciple. You should do this. I like like this. Yeah. Every time to prepare and share, someone has to do. And it increases. Our meditation and desire for meditation and put our energy in the service of Sami in our Dasi Very nice. I'm very proud of it. Wow. Thank you so much, Guru. Thank you, Guru Yeah. Thank you, my dear Bayo. Thank you very much. I don't want to broke your flow with anything. Rade, rade. There is more time you can more read if you have a character. Wow. Okay, so we can we can continue with verse verse nine. Oh goddess, this person has died from the bites of the black snake of separation from you. Please revive me with the medicinal luck that anoints your lotus feet. O oh, Goddess, this person has died from the bites of the black snake of separation from you. Please revive me with the medicinal luck that anoints your lotus feet. Commentary. In the previous verse, Sripad attained the relish of Swaminiji. Now the vision has abated. And he feels the intense burning of love in separation. Just as someone quickly dies when being bitten by a terrible black snake, being scorched from tip to toe, by the intense fire of the poison, Shiragunata feels like dying 
when he is burning in the poison of separation from Sri Radharani. Swamini's footlock is then the only elixir which can revive Tulasi. Nothing else can help against this burning fire of separation from Sri Radharani. Even though Shyama Sundar was accompanied by millions of gopis, he could not find pleasure without Sri Radha. Radha, Radha. <clears throat> so one thing came to my mind while I was reading this, I forgot to mention. So when Radhika goes in the state of Madana Mahabhava, Krishna always faints. He doesn't, he doesn't have to be uh, in the company of Radhika. He can be in company of some other gopi, but he always faints. When he feels that Radhika has entered this Madana Mahabhava, he always faints. faints. This is very interesting. Such are these highest emotions of Shirada that whenever she feels them, Krishna falls, Krishna faints in ecstasy. Radhe. Radhe. Now you inspire me just to share something because we can see here that in this beautiful exchange of love between Radha and Krishna, her lover, there is two prominent feelings, happiness because of meeting and separation because of uh, sadness because of separation. And these strong feelings are actually, we, uh, we cannot imagine how intense these feelings are. And it's said that it's like a mixing nectar and poison. So, how someone can survive if in his heart nectar and poison are mixing? No one can survive. But only those who has a pure love can survive the nectar of meeting and this burning fire of separation. Pure love gives the strength to survive experience of strong meeting and to survive the burning fire of separation. So, it is like ice and fire which are coming together. Or we said nectar or poison. Like Radhika is almost dying. She's not dying, but she's almost dying. In the situation when she feels burning fire of separation, her kinkari is also almost dying. When she feels separation from Radhika. And Raghunata can survive this condition, burning condition, because his heart is completely pure. Only with completely, completely, completely pure heart, 
devotee can survive such kind of separation? Add one thing more. Please, Gurudev. This, that our sarup is fixed and in that person, the Raghunath Das Goswami is living in his sarup of Manjari as a kinkri of Radhika. Yes. Then pain starts coming. Because if I am not fixed in this bhav, pain will not come. Because sometimes Krishna will come, sometimes friends will come, sometimes gopis will come, sometimes other Chandravali will come. So all is important because of the Krishna. Not from the my sarupa. My Siddha Deha is not fixed in Radha Dasa. So pain will not happen. When the Siddha Deha is fixed in the one pointed, my sarupa means my identification is totally fixed. I don't want to deviate from that. Even for the Chandravali, even to the, is all they are catching our mind for Krishna. Chandravali meeting, Gopi's meeting, how much we are attracting in Gopi Bhav, that attraction is also interested to see. Mandiris are not bothering for that. Only their mind is fixed in the Adhika Siva and they are fixed in their soul. That is the beauty of feeling pain and suffering. That practice is most important practice. Then it's relishing the rasa of Vipralamba rasa. Yes. Yes. But before that, it has to be love. <laughs> yeah. that, to feel that, separation, we need the love. Rag and rag, man. Yeah. Yes. Suffering. Suffering separation from her, he went to the bank of the Amuna and lamented for her. The poet Jayad. Who is doing Krishna? Mm. What? No, Tulasi is doing. Tulsi. Yeah. You see, always says this book will always keep you practice that Radha is the goal. Who is he doing for Radhika? What she is doing? And if Krishna is doing for Radhika's meditation. So always Manjari is one point in meditating on Radhika. This is the beauty of Vilakusu Manjari and Radha Rasudai. We select from the past time from different places. Many pastimes you can see that. But when you go through the Anandas Bhavaji book, only one pointedness will come. And this is the beauty of these two books. Until 
it takes time to come to one point. And when it comes, it's very rubbish. Very well. Highest rubbish. Yes, go on. Just I give you some key to see that. The poet Jayadev describes the Vasanta Rasa as follows. Kansari Krishna left all the other beautiful girls of Vraj to take Radha. Mm who is the essential chain who binds him to his lusty desires in his heart. When Sri Radhika becomes jealous, became jealous and left Krishna behind, Krishna looked for her everywhere. His mind pierced by Cupid's darts. When he could not find her, Madhava entered a kunja on the bank of the Yamuna and began to lament there. Yeah. Even a billion gopis yeah. cannot soothe Krishna's pain of separation from Sri Radha. Sri Madasa Goswami described in his Mukta Chartira, how Krishna anxiously lamented about, Shira, about Shirada's absence to his own Queen Satyabhama in Dvaraka after describing his Raja Lila to her. Oh, alas, when will I get that Radha, who is like Champaka flowers on my chest, who showers my lotus-like eyes with nectar, whose bodily beauty is the only place for my pastimes, who is like a wine, for the bird of my heart to sit on, who is my desired opulence and my very life. Even a stone <clears throat> Krishna lamented to himself about Sri Radha after he drank the sweet nectar words Harade you are the abode for the pigeon of my life a boundless river with a stream of sweetness that is enhanced by prema and the mind of jokes, riddles, qualities and arts. You are the moonlight that feeds the chakora bird of my eyes. 
Alas, alas. Which force of bad luck has taken me away from you after first finding you? Who is telling? Krishna. You see, before whole book we are reading to glorify Krishna. All the books was to how to glorify Krishna. So Krishna was the goal of life. Anyhow, we have to relate with Krishna. And here Krishna is teaching that I glorify to Radhika and she is the real goal for you. Radhe, he is suffering from burning separation. <laughs> and also he is teaching <laughs> how Radhika's maid servants, Sadakas, can also come to this stage for burning, feeling of burning separation for Radhika. Ultimate so, goal. Krishna is teaching to the Manjari also. Yes. <laughs> the next, the next, the next sentence really describes this. I have to, I, oh. I, we have to calculate this. Na? We are standing so deep <laughs> that if we are not in that flow, we will not understand. Yeah. You are standing very deep subjects, my dear. <laughs> So that is the beauty. Means now Mahaprabhu teaching the center point is Radha. Not try to make Krishna center point of your life. Then you are going wrong wrong direction. You are not a Gaudiya Vaishnava. Because you want to move for Krishna. Good. But Gaudiya means who is glorifying even the Krishna to Radha. Yeah. And this is the reason, Gurudev. Why in some verses acharyas are addressing Krishna? Please help me to attain my Radha. Yeah. Help me. I want <laughs> that you help me because you will also need me. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah Radha. First to meditate in Radhika. And then Mahaprabhu is himself practicing Manjari how to put in after him this practice in life. Chaitanya Chaitanya. If you not understand with true Chaitanya Chaitanya, it's very far there. This is the beauty of Chaitanya Chaitanya. Yeah. And actually, this is the three reasons Krishna wanted to relish Radha's Bhava. How he relished through most exalted relishing through Vipralamba. And he wanted to experience, to become her maidservant. Third reason. Very simple. Yes. Atta teaching means takes long time to reach. Means we want to confuse ourselves. It's better yourself practice in alone room, not listen other subjects. No suggestions. They know only to bring to Krishna, 
and they will confuse you again mind all the old practice will be useless if you put one in a milk one spoon of the yogurt all milk be break similar all my sadhana tapa when i put again yogurt in that milk is form change but go on. very good that they pram beautifully you have to do two two weeks you have to do it two that they have to create collect in the same way the kinkaris have no other shelter bah. but shrimati's lotus feet you see no other shelter than that <laughs> uh, all teachers are teaching us even the krishna teaching our guru manjari teaching our rupa ragunath is teaching or mahaprabhu is teaching after i am so foolish is taking time to understand too much condition so takes time rad kisi wala bottle dekhna beta in the same way the kinkaris have no other shelter but shrimati's lotus feet yeah no other such where i will go then you Thank you, Dev. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, Dev. Thank you, Guru Dev. Yeah. Thank you very much, Radha. We can stop here. It's too late. Yeah. Thank you, my dear. It's a great point you bring up. This is the subject for. meditation for one day mm. thank you gurudev thank you goranga sundara thank you all for listening to me thank you